What's going on? This is Alan Brown, aka Bully the Kid, and this is So You Want to Play Bass, Volume 1, or Chapter 1, Episode 1, whatever. It's the beginning, it's the first video. Um, I'm not going to do all the introductions and all that stuff. I'm just going to hop directly into the video. So, um, this is the bass I'm using. This is the very first bass I ever owned. This is a P bass for the configuration of the pickups that are right here. Uh, there are also jazz basses and then PJ basses and humbuckers, but I'll talk about that in later volumes. So, this is the very first bass. Let's go over the parts of it. We have a bridge, we have a pickup, we have the body of the guitar, and then we have the neck. There are also tuning pegs on the back, and these are called open gear tuners because the gear itself is exposed. Um, and that's the main, those are the main components of a bass varying configurations but these are the main components so first thing I want to talk about is positioning of the bass uh, some basses are neck heavy so they dive uh, basses that are known for this are the Thunderbird or any uh, multi-string basses like some five and six string basses some necks are heavier and when you let them go they just dive so let's talk about positioning you can either put it on your uh, this is my right leg because I'm a right-handed bassist and uh, you can do it that way or you can do it this way I've seen this done with a whole uh, a lot of jazz bass guitar players because uh, they tend to do their meat and potatoes here running in a loop and then go and do solos and this positioning makes it very easy to get to the upper register of um, of the bass guitar itself it makes it real easy to get there rather than be here and you have to kind of come into your body a little bit so it's just depend on what you're trying to do how you're starting this thing off but I would recommend starting with your right leg that being said you want to put your arm on the back end of the bass to kind of use as a counterweight so that it doesn't move and it gives your left hand mobility to move up and down the neck so um, I normally put uh, about the middle of my forearm on the back end of the bass and then that kind of it kind of determines where my hand positioning is same amount of pressure for wherever my hand is placed uh, I tend to put my thumb over the pick guard sometimes I go over the string it's just a matter of preference whatever is more comfortable to you whenever I learn I learn to put my thumb on the pickup right here and then uh, play my strings using that as a kind of like a uh, point to pull to. Okay, so right there we have hand positioning on the, uh, or arm positioning on the back end of the bass, uh, thumb positioning on the pickup of the bass. Uh, then again, if you have a jazz bass, the hand placement may be different, but the general theory is the same with the arm and the thumb. Uh, this is something that I learned and it's come from trial and error but I'm gonna tell you so you don't have to make the same mistakes when I first started out I was playing the bass like this and when you start playing that may not be a problem except your forearm from you doing this motion a lot your forearm starts to get tired while you're playing the bass so what I'm gonna tell you to do is turn your wrist and stretch your fingers out it may feel weird at the very beginning, but it's going to be easier in the long run, and it helps with um, playing multiple notes quicker. If you turn your thumb, well, turn your hand like this, and play like this rather than playing flat on the neck. Um, as you're playing, this may happen to you. You may tend to lean towards this way because your forearm is starting to hurt, and your hand will start diving down here. This puts more pressure on your shoulder and then your trap here will start getting tired because you're having to hold it up and stuff like that. So I would tell you to make this hand positioning easier when you're first starting out go ahead and rock the bass back to about this point so it makes it more comfortable so you can play. You'll understand as you practice. So that's a little tip that I'll give to you in the very beginning, very very beginning. Um, Let's go ahead and talk about actually plucking through the string, right? So I've seen this from people that have taught themselves. They tend to play the bass and they're pulling 
out when they're playing notes. Again, fatigue on your forearm. As you're playing this, you tend to get tired. So what I would tell you to do is take your finger, I'll actually come a little bit closer, take your finger and pluck through the string to the next string. You want to pluck through the string to the next string and that goes for any string you're playing. So you play through the string and you rest your finger on the next string up. So that's something I would give, I would suggest to you as you're starting to do this whole thing. Again, it's about fatigue. You're trying to play these sets. Your bass is heavier than a lead guitar. You need to survive the set. Good technique is paramount. Okay, so recap. Arm on the back end of the bass. Thumb on the pickup. Come on now. Come on now. Stop doing that. All right. Okay, good. All right, good. So, arm on the back end of the bass, thumb on the pickup playing through the string, bass oriented, a little bit higher than parallel. This is just for comfort. And uh, let's talk about left thumb placement. You don't, you rarely ever want to bring your thumb over the top of the bass. If you can, you want to keep it towards the middle, the back end of the bass, somewhere right here. Don't vary too, too much between this area. Just kind of try to stay in the middle of the neck. That's going to, it's going to allow you more mobility with your uh, fingers for one, and then uh, stability while you're playing the notes to squeeze the notes on the frets, which are these metal bars, just in case you didn't know. Um, so yeah, that. So let's go ahead and get into it. For this P bass, there are two knobs. We have the volume, which talks for itself, and we have the tone, which adds brightness or takes brightness off, right? So let's give an example of that. Um, yeah. This is with the tone all the way off. I'm going to try because I, I have to think about it to actually do it. I'm going to tell you to play with just your pointer finger or your middle finger. Whenever I first learned, I learned to play with my middle finger. It was just easier to get more power in playing my notes and stuff like that. But I'm going to say uh, start off playing with your pointer finger, playing through the string, and that's going to do a few things. It's going to force you to Focus on the note that you're playing. You don't have to think about your right hand. Just making sure that you're playing the note with your right hand on the string that your left hand is fingering, right? So when you're first starting out, the thing I would actually tell you to do to practice skipping strings or practice um, plucking or plucking or playing notes is uh, a little chromatic run that I use as a uh, warm-up whenever I'm actually about to play and it's playing four notes and I'll play them, I did that so you can see them but I play them with all the fingers start doing that I'll uh, then switch to trying to do it faster and then once I get that pretty fast I'll go the back way uh, I'll make it up the scale of doing these four notes and then take it back the reverse way so it sounds like this Right? 
So uh, just starting out, these are some of the beginning things you can do. And um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this first video there because I'm about to start getting complicated and I want this first video to be an introduction to everything. Um, so yeah, I might actually do a two-part video on Monday so I could actually talk a few, talk a little bit more about some of the uh, things you're looking for when you're actually starting the bass journey if you don't already own the equipment. Uh, so that'll probably be uploaded around three or four o'clock on Monday, January 14th. Thank y'all for watching. And if you're watching this first one, I'm sure you're going to see the second one. And I'm probably going to call that volume 1.2 or something like that. I don't know how to do this. I'm just doing this by the hip. So, uh, till that video, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.